here. There we go. Awesome. Welcome, everybody, to the November 2021 installment of the Microsoft Data Platform Continuity Virtual Group. Uh, with us this month is Javier Villegas. Uh, we're going to be talking about high availability and disaster recovery in SQL Server and Azure SQL. So with that, I'll turn it over to you. All right. Very good. Hello, everybody. Let me share my screen. I'm not totally familiar with the Zoom uh, application, but you're gonna drive me in. Uh, let me see. I can go here, uh, share screen. Here we go. There we go, looks great. You see? Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. Okay, as uh, David said, the name of this uh, presentation is High Availability and Disaster Recovery in SQL Server and Azure SQL. Uh, this is a quite interesting topic, uh, actually. Uh, Microsoft has done a lot of uh, effort on this technology because, you know, as the user group name stands, business continuity is uh, extremely important. Um, some of us, a uh, while back, we believed that being at the cloud uh, allow us just to forget about all these things. And in reality, this is an infrastructure environment that we need to take care also of high availability and disaster recovery. There are some uh, specific component of the Azure SQL family that have some sort of HA uh, as part of the service, right? But in order to be able to have uh, business continuity uh, at all the time, we need to understand exactly what we are dealing with, and you know how how to act, react, and be able to use all this technology. Mm -hmm. A little bit about myself. My name is Javier Villegas. I am from Buenos Aires, Argentina. I work as IT director in the DBA and BI services at the Mediterranean Shipping Company. I've been working with the SQL Server for more than 20 years. Um, my very first uh, SQL Server version was 6.0. And believe me, HADR back then was way, way more difficult than what it is uh, today. Uh, I am a Microsoft MVP in the data platform uh, category. And I'm also Microsoft certified trainer. Uh, since the beginning of this year, I am um, part of the Board of Advisors for the Azure Data Tech community, this new uh, framework uh, that uh, is uh, run by the community and empowered by Microsoft uh, in where, you know, we are covering or we're trying to cover and have some, uh, you, you know, uh, common uh, framework for all the data communities around the globe. I'm also a technical speaker. I've been part of uh, multiple events. I was a heavily active member of the past community uh, before, past summit, uh, marathon, SQL Saturdays, of, uh, virtual groups, everything actually. And uh, last week during the new past data community summit, I also deliver a couple of sessions. Um, I'm also one of the members of the member are an organizer of the local SQL Argentina um, data community group. We have our uh, you know uh, user group, meetup, YouTube channel, everything. So um, for the one of you who speak Spanish and would like to join us, you are more than welcome. Um, also, we during these uh, crazy times of pandemia, 
uh, with uh, some friends and colleagues here from the LATAM community. We create a podcast called Ashur in El Bar, in where you know we have like uh, you know we believe or we hope that we are in in a real bar, just sharing our favorite beverage, just discussing about technology. So quite interesting talks. Uh, we also have this um, uh, gold edition in where we go and interview um, some of the experts around the world like Bob Ward, Rohan Kumar, uh, Guys in the Cube. So if you are interested in seeing this uh, you know, recorded episode, you just go to our YouTube channel and you will find us, Ashur and Elvar. So I also have my email address, Twitter, LinkedIn, and my blog, in case you want to reach me, uh, if you have any further question about uh, this topic or any other that you may wanna discuss, or if you just only want to uh, networking with me. Mm -hmm. So, before starting, we have to put some sort of uh, an entity of what we're gonna be talking about, at least the product and services that we will be focusing on. Uh, a while back, Microsoft came up with this new uh, umbrella called Azure SQL, right? In where there are four main components. Uh, one of them, which is the most recent one in the family is Azure SQL Edge, which give us the possibility of running SQL Server on an uh, ARM device, like, like for example, uh, a Raspberry Pi or a sensor. Uh, we're gonna um, exclude this one for this presentation, at least for, for the HADR part. And then we're gonna be focusing on the main three uh, components of the Azure SQL family. Uh, this is SQL Server running on virtual machines, um, which is what Microsoft called infrastructure as a service, which is kind of interesting because, you know, for the ones that uh, like me and you most probably are coming from the on-premise world, right? Uh, in where we don't, we, we don't have to deal with SQL Server only. We also have to deal with the whole infrastructure part with like authentication, patching, backups, high availability and disaster recovery as well, right? So this is an important thing that in this uh, virtual machines running SQL Server or SQL Server running in our uh, data center, you know, all the techniques that we're gonna be seeing uh, today uh, across the presentation are completely valid, right? This is infrastructure as a service. And then in the other bucket, platform as a service in where Microsoft offer to us like a SQL Server like endpoint in where we just connect to it and we don't know slash we don't care what is underneath just serving that SQL Server endpoint, right? We have managed instance, and Azure SQL database, right? In where Microsoft is taking care of some of the, uh, you know, uh, stuff that will provide to the service high availability, right? Then ourselves, we may need to deal with um, disaster recovery, right? So the topics that we will be covering today is first of all, we will try to understand a little bit what is high availability, right? How we can measure uh, high availability, right? Or availability per se. Uh, what is disaster recovery and maybe the difference between high availability and disaster recovery? Because maybe you may have one environment configured with high availability, but is not ready for a disaster recovery scenario, right? And then, as uh, we said, uh, we're gonna cover all the mm, or the technology that we can technology or features that we can use 
in order to achieve HADR in SQL Server, Azure SQL Database, Managed Instance. And then we're gonna be covering the most recent announcements that Microsoft uh, delivered a couple of weeks ago during Microsoft Ignite when they present uh, SQL Server 2022. They made some announcements and they also uh, gave some uh, you know, updates of uh, several features, but one of them is really um, targeting um, high availability disaster recovery and a little bit of, of uh, another flavor of this feature. So we're gonna be mentioning uh, this feature. We're gonna describe it as well. So let's move on. So what is high availability, right? So is the ability for our system, right, to operate continuously, doesn't matter if there is a problem, right? Simple like that. When people ask me, what is my shop? I always say, I have to take care of the SQL Server environment. And with that, I mean, my SQL Server has, uh, need to run smoothly, with performance, secure, without data lost, and all the time, right? And with all the time, I'm also focusing on this uh, part of HADR, right? So it's important, it's extremely important to design our environment, considering that it has to have HADR, from day one, why do I say so? Because, and I know a, a bunch of cases like this, most probably you come up with your environment, you set up your SQL servers, et cetera, and then you realize that your system uh, is not HADR aware, right? Adjusting or really or adjusting or setting up what you have as an HADR environment, sometimes uh, it's going to be complex. Most probably it will require some downtime, right? But if you think your environment from day one with this, I guarantee you that uh, you won't have any problems. We're going to dig a little bit deeper on, on this. I know also that uh, in some cases, uh, HADR is not, uh, let's say, attractive uh, when you have to sell it internally, right? And, and why do I say so? Because you have to, I mean, in the on-premise world, you have to tell your boss, hey, I need another server that will be sitting up there, just waiting and doing nothing and burning heat. Uh, in case of something happen, right? Uh, and in, in some cases, it's difficult to, to understand. I know that if it is a serious business, most probably they know what we are uh, requesting. They know what uh, you know, we, we need to do, right? But I'm also talking by experience from, from some years uh, that this is sometimes not, uh, not too easy to sell internally, right? But again, if we uh, design the environment uh, from day one, it's gonna be much easier. Something also to consider here, which is extremely important, um, we're gonna be focusing on the uh, relational slash transactional SQL server environment, right? Uh, and I know several cases in where the SQL Server environment is HADR aware. So it has, uh, uh, let's say, the whole business continuity ready. If there is a failure, it's gonna, you know, it's not gonna have any problem, etc. But you also have to deal with the applications connecting to SQL Server, web servers, middle tiers, clients, etc., networking, etc. So, you know, and I know several cases in where the SQL Server uh, environment was up and running all the time, 
after having an issue with the availability, but you know the application servers were not covered by HADR. So you know, in terms of SQL, everything was fine, but in terms of the overall service that was supporting that SQL Server environment, uh, it was not right. So it's always important to have a unified strategy within the let's say DBA team and the infrastructure team and also the application uh, support team, right? Because again, here we're gonna be covering features and points related to SQL, but there are many, many more, right? Okay, so how does it work? Uh, it's completely impossible to have an environment available all the time. And by all the time, I mean 100% of the time, right? Uh, that is why, you know, the availability is measured with uh, what we call nines, right? So three nines, four nines, so 99.9, 99.99 and so on. So this is what we're gonna be trying to achieve here, right? How to set up our environment to match this rule of the five nights, right? So of course, uh, if we have, let's say more nines in our HADR solution, well, we're gonna have less downtime, but you know, we have to have this uh, in mind. It's important to understand that when we design an HADR or, or let's say an HA environment, right? We have to design it thinking of that we shouldn't see any single point of failure. And with that, you know, I'm meaning that every single component of our data services uh, must be redundant. With that is, you know, the disk, the network, the server itself, and, and the whole infrastructure, right? So if we have a problem with one of the disks, right? There is another disk in some sort of standby mode, just taking the, um, the, the, the taking in place of the one that it failed. If there is a problem with the network card, any kind of problem, right? Uh, there is another one just sitting there to uh, take the, the place of the other. If the whole server goes down, right? And I know some cases, um, we should have another component being able to take that place, right? And eventually, if we go another level, and that is disaster recovery, which we're gonna be covering in a minute, right? If the whole data center uh, goes down or eventually the whole Azure region goes down, we should have another environment up and running in a standby mode in order to fulfill the, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the environment that fails, right? So how do we measure or which are the points that we should consider in order to measure HADR? Remember, none of the time or, I mean, it's not gonna be 100%, but ideally we should try to uh, get close to 100%. Right. And there are a few points that we should uh, take into consideration when we talk about uh, HA, right? Uh, MTDF, mean time between failures, right? This is uh, the amount of time that we expect between two failures, right? So definitely, you know, when now that we have the whole machine learning and we can, you know, train uh, models, etc. There are many of them in where we can get this value training different models just to get this, uh, you know, uh, time between two possible 
failures of, in this case, our um, system. So let's say if we have uh, a failure um, one day and the next month at the same day, we have you know, another failure, our mean time between failure is 30 days, right? Mean downtime, MDT. So this is the amount of time that our system, in this case, again, SQL Server environment or Azure SQL environment uh, is down, right? So if our system is down for five minutes, one hour or you know, one full day, this is our mean uh, downtime. Recovery time objective, RTO, right? So this is the amount of time that it takes us, right, to recover or repair the environment so we can be up and running uh, as soon as possible, right? Having these uh, values in mind, um, we can, you know, learn a little bit more about our environment. When we do the design of our environment, we can, let's say, uh, build the system considering, considering this. Remember what we said uh, before, right? Not a single point of failure, right? And you can come up with uh, a bunch of them, right? I remember many years ago, you know, we had everything like uh, redundant, but the switch that was hosting the multiple servers uh, was only one. And one day, guess what? The switch went down. So it doesn't matter how many servers, how many cables we had, how many redundant disks, et cetera, we had, the whole thing went down, right? It's also important to, I, I always say that when we build these systems, the most important thing we have to do is, beside building it from day one, is test, right? We should definitely take some time to test the possible failures that we may have. There are certain um, certifications, uh, ISO certification, that will require you and the company to accomplish this test and document the whole process every so often, right? Once every six months, once a year. Uh, so simulate uh, uh, a problem and document the whole procedure to recover and to be up and you know, accomplish business continuity as much as possible, right? So really important to have this uh, in mind. So then we reach this point of uh, service level agreement, right? If you, let's say, rent a service on a data center or in Azure, or you build your own uh, environment, right? You have your desired or, or, or you commit to a specific SLA, right? And uh, this is the amount of nines that we would like to accomplish. And just to have an idea of the amount of time that uh, each of these nines means, we have this table here in where, you know, if our solution is 99.9, uh, uh, we can have eight hours and 45 and 46 minutes of downtime over the whole year, right? So if we have four nine is 52 minutes, five nine, five minutes and so on, right? So uh, again, we will never be 100%, uh, right? But we have to try to get close to this value. And, you know, just to have an idea on what that means. And, you know, you can say, uh, you know, uh, eight hours is, is a lot, but believe me, uh, a year is also a long time. So again, you have to design it properly, test it carefully, and make sure that you document the whole thing. It's important, uh, and, and I always say this to, to my teams, Every time that we do the test, every time that we face a real situation, 
like, uh, you know, a disaster recovery. And in my career, I had uh, several, like, for example, earthquakes in where the whole office went down and we had to come up with the uh, environment up and running immediately, right? Uh, every time that we have the situation to test or to recover an environment like this of, for, for certain situations, for any kind of situation, uh, is something that you will learn a lot, right? Believe me, it's uh, something that, you know, when, when I know that it's quite stressful, I know that when the system is down, you have, you know, you have a, a lot of adrenaline just trying to fix, identify, fix, and, and, and put the services up and uh, running uh, again. But my recommendation on this point is that when everything is back on track, business is up and running again, you should sit down with your team and uh, you know document and share the ideas of this post-mortem uh, exercise or real life situation, right? It's really useful because uh, you know it's gonna provide you feedback and you're gonna be ready for uh, you know future incidents, right? So definitely. These are the three things that I will, you know, do a lot of emphasis during the whole presentation, right? So design your environment with HA in mind since day one, right? Uh, maybe a parenthesis here that not only for the database system, but for the overall application, right? Test your HA solution, right? And constantly monitor. Monitor definitely will also uh, teach you a lot. Right? You will see the counters. You will see uh, you know, if, if some of the component of your redundant uh, environment may have some problem, if you are using one of them, if you are using the other, if you are doing maybe load balancing and eventually one of the components goes down, only one can uh, you know support the overall uh, activity? No, a lot of things to to have in mind, but definitely uh, I, I want to emphasize on on this. Mm -hmm. So, if we go a step farther, right? Let's say we have our data center, we have our two servers, we have multiple switch, multiple cables. With redundant this, redundant network card, etc. Right? And you know, we accomplish several lines in our uh, solution. But what about if the whole data center goes down because of you know any reason? One of them could be a natural disaster, right? That physically destroy the whole data center. Again. I've seen one of those in my career. So definitely uh, happens, right? Uh, if you have your data center with your two server with your redundant things, but the whole data center went down because of an earthquake, because of, you know, a flooding or whatever, you uh, lose everything, right? Um, of course, uh, as part of a DR solution, you should focus on the backups, and then we're going to be focusing on this uh, in, in in few minutes, right? You should be able to uh, maybe you're going to be down for hours, days, month, uh, depending on how the system was designed, how the business uh, support this downtime of a major disaster. But what you should keep in mind is that uh, you should never lose data. And with that, I mean, you can lose the whole set of servers, but your data, your databases in this case should be, uh, you know, recovered uh, by, you know, every single circumstances. And one of the best practices in this case is that, you know, do the backups properly, right? To be able to do the backup properly, uh, there are uh, some things that uh, you have to keep in mind. And again, if you go to an ISO certification, this is one of the uh, points that uh, they're going to be doing a lot of 
uh, focus a lot of uh, emphasis here. Imagine that you have this HA environment in your data center, multiple servers, everything redundant, everything. And you do the backups just following the, the, the rules, full backups, differential, transaction level backup every few minutes, right? But uh, what if those backups are stored within the same data center, right? And again, the whole building uh, has a problem and you can never get into the building again. You are losing everything, right? The history, the data, everything. So as part of the best practices, one of the things that we have to keep in mind is that even the backups all the times need to be off offloaded somewhere else, right? Uh, not on the same location. And that means physically, right? You can, you know, consider uh, one of the, 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 the practices that uh, used to be that when you do the backups to tapes, for example, or to an external drive on a scheduled basis, daily, weekly, monthly, depending on, on, on your needs, someone just go take those tapes physically and move it to another location, right? This is one of the first thing. But again, and as I said before, your system could be highly available, right? But it cannot be DR ready. Right? So when we go specifically to an overall HADR environment, when we consider the whole uh, package, right, in where, again, the, 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 the ninth or the SLA also cover, you know, the possibility of a major disaster. So maybe you design your environment with, uh, you know, five nines, right, because you have everything redundant, but if you have a, you know, a, a power outage in your main location for days, well, those nines definitely will, will go down. And that is why the DR uh, part of the solution enter into place, right? So it's not only high availability, it's also disaster recovery. You, so you have to treat the whole thing as one environment. So I always say, or I'd like to say that when, or, or when, I, when, when I get these questions, uh, uh, I, my, my answer is always, when, when I get asked, how many servers do I need or as a minimum amount of servers to accomplish HADR, right? And the answer is at least three of them, right? Two in the main location to accomplish HA, right? And a third one on a different location connected, of course, through uh, a network, right, acting as uh, DR in case of this major disaster, right? So with that, we eliminate single point of failures or a point of problems, including a major disaster, right? So this is quite important. We have to make sure that uh, the systems and the data, right, are you know, uh, backup all the time, and that we are able to recover it quickly and easy, right? When I said easy, I will always try to focus on automatically, right? It's also important to mention that there are HADR environments that in some cases, when they fail, they need a human interaction in order to fix the situation and being up and running in the, you know, uh, the, the, the redundant component, right? With that, you are not accomplishing real HADR, right? If you need someone to go and do the switch manually, right? You're gonna be doing it partially, right? Because it requires someone to, to do it. So having that in mind, you also need to de de design your solution to do automatic failover to any of the components, right? In order to, you know, accomplish as many nines as we can, right? As we said earlier, 
monitoring the environment is extremely important, right? Distribute the resources in uh, different location in case of a major disaster, right? And, you know, when I said major disaster, or when we heard the, the, the term major disaster, everybody can think about of, uh, you know, an earthquake or a flooding or something like that. But maybe the whole area goes down in terms of power, right? So, you know, there is not a natural disaster, but there is no power, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in the place. And with that in mind, you also have to consider, you know, power generators, uh, uh, air conditioner, backups, everything, right? Again, accomplish as many knives as we can. It's not easy, it's not cheap, but again, if your business require to be up and running, you know, all the time or as close to all the time, definitely uh, you have to spend uh, some bucks on the overall solution, especially when you are defining it at the beginning, right? With all these things in mind. Mm -hmm. It's also important to have uh, a monitoring system that detects the failures immediately, right? SQL Server will help that in some, in some uh, areas, right? But, you know, when the failure happened, we need to be notified, uh, I mean, detect the failure quickly and be notified uh, as soon as possible. I have cases in where, especially with the disk, right? We used to have rays uh, with multiple uh, disks and you sleep, uh, you know, uh, well, because you say, oh, I have multiple disks that uh, are backing up my activity. So in case I have a problem with the storage, there is another disk that will take the, the, the responsibility of, of the one that failed. But, you know, if you have an environment with, for example, you have three disks, one of them go, goes down, you know, you need to replace it quickly to be back with your solution. Because I know cases in where nobody monitors this and the day that the disk goes down, you say, why if, if I have everything redundant? But maybe you didn't know that there were one or more disks that were uh, in failure status since a while, right? And this is just one, one uh, example. Right. When you are building your environment, when you design it from scratch, uh, before making it production, right, you need to test the whole thing from you know a single failure, like for example, shutting down a switch, shutting down a server, shutting down the power, right, to everything. Just you know, shut down the the, 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 the overall AC and power for your data center. Right? If that is possible, you know, testing will definitely be the key to have succeed on you know, your HADR uh, environment. And now moving forward to SQL Server, specifically the SQL Server product, right? The one that we install uh, from the, you know, we download from internet the ISO file and we install it into one or multiple servers. We're gonna be focusing from now on on the, the uh, you know, features that we have to accomplish some sort of HADI. One of them, right, is SQL Server replication, right? Uh, this feature is not only designed to be part of an HADR solution, right? But, you know, in certain environments, it will allow you to have your data, you know, replicated on a different location all the time, right? So there are four types of replications, right? And if you use replication for HADR, uh, we have this table with pros and cons, right? Uh, 
In the pros column, I can say that you can use it to replicate to multiple servers at the same time, right? Um, uh, you can replicate all the databases if you want, right? And eventually the replication can be bidirectional, right? So, you know, this is not gonna be for, for HADR purposes, but eventually, you know, you can uh, consider like a bidirectional solution. Um, if, if we would like to add another uh, thing here is that replication is available since, I don't know which SQL Server version, but probably the first one, right? In the part of the cons here, you know, when we have to do a failover, failover means that we move out from one environment that is failing to the one that we want to take as the new, let's say, uh, active uh, server. Uh, we have to do it manually, right? Uh, as part of setting up replication, we have to take a snapshot of the databases. And if this is a very large database, it could take uh, some time and resources, right? And uh, it, it can be quite easy to get the databases out of sync and, you know, the whole resyncing process will take some time and, you know, redoing this snapshot that we mentioned before. Mm -hmm. Another uh, approach, right, which today is discontinued, meaning that eventually you can use it, but it's not recommended because Microsoft is not doing uh, further investment since several versions, actually, right? Uh, you have database mirroring, right? In where in the pros column, you have an automatic failover, right? So uh, eventually if something happened to the, the one that is the primary, it can automatically move to another server. It's quite easy to set up and the recall and, and, and the you know failover time is really, really fast. In terms of the cons, uh, you can only have two servers in the solution, right? The databases on the replicas or, or the standby server cannot be accessed, right? Because, you know, they are just in some sort of mode that is just waiting or standby mode that if something happened to the primary is in, at that point onwards, you're going to be able to use it, right? And uh, it was replaced by another technology that we will cover later called always on availability group, the starting SQL Server 2012. Mm -hmm. There is also log shipping, right? Another uh, technology that is available since uh, several versions ago. So using the concept of the transaction log of the databases, right? You can set up log shipping and you know, ship to multiple servers and have the databases in some sort of standby, standby mode in uh, other servers. Um, is it, as part of Pro, right? It doesn't require you to have SQL Server Enterprise Edition, right? That we will see that most of the HADR uh, features will require uh, a, a SQL Server Enterprise license, right? Um, so as part of the con is uh, also manual failover and it's really hard to maintain, right? For the SQL Server replication, I can also say that it's hard to, to maintain as well, right? And then when we do a step forward in terms of HA, right? We have this concept of shared storage failover cluster meaning that we have a single storage, right? But by single, we can have, you know, uh, the storage also covered in terms of HA, you know, multiple disks, multiple uh, power lines, uh, multiple enclosures. Uh, but, you know, for the system, we see it as only one storage, right? And then we have at least two servers the concept of active passive, right? So one of the servers will be active and serving in this case, SQL Server, right? 
But if something happened to the primary server, let's say that it crashed, it say that you have to reboot it for patching or any other reason, you can do the process of failover. So the other node, right, can take the ownership of the storage of the services and you know you can switch it you know from one side to the other with absolutely no problem for the sql server standpoint you will always have one single name and ip address so doesn't matter which is the active or which is the passive node as a backend right you always will be connecting to a single name or a single ip address this is the concept of shared storage failover cluster. There are many other um, cluster types, but in this case, we're going to be focusing on this. This solution is available since a long time ago. This is actually uh, part of uh, another framework, which is Windows Server failover cluster, and SQL Server goes at the top of it, right? Um, as I said, this technology uh, is available in, in the on-premise world since several years ago, but in Azure, it's quite recent. I would say it has a little bit more than a year that is available in, in Azure, right? So how do you see this within your Windows uh, setup, right? You have the failover cluster manager, you see your servers, you see uh, the, the, the nodes, Right, you can have at least two nodes, right? To have uh, you know an active passive uh, solution, right? And then you have the disk, right? Which again are presented to both servers, but only one of them at a time can take ownership of this. And you always have one single name and single IP address, right? Here you have the the shared disk, right? That will allow you to accomplish HA, right? But if you want to have what we said before, the, the solution with at least three nodes, right? You have to add an additional node on a different uh, geographical location, right? Connected through a network. And you can combine failover cluster with another technology that we will cover in, in a minute, which is availability groups always on, the one that replace um, database mirroring, right? So with that, you will have a single point of connection, which is this concept of listener, which is a, a, a fixed name, but with a floating IP, right? that all your clients will be connecting to that listener. And doesn't matter which is the, 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 the server, the virtual machine that is acting as the read-write replica, right? You will always have connected to this listener. So how does high availability work with always on availability group? Well, you know, again, is relying on Windows Server um, failover cluster feature, right? And you can have multiple nodes within your uh, solution, only one of them will be the primary, meaning that is the replica that is hosting the databases which are in read write mode. And you can have multiple secondary replicas in where you, know, you can have copies of your databases that will be synchronized with the primary, right? That means that if you, uh, insert, update, or delete in a table on the read write replica, right? You're gonna see the changes also applied to the, the other replicas, right? Um, if we go a step farther here, we have two modes, right? One is asynchronous commit mode, and the other one is synchronous, right? What is the main difference between one or the other? Well, synchronous commit mode means that if you have, let's say, two servers within your availability group, right? When you do a transaction, SQL Server will wait till the transaction is committed in both servers to return you the acknowledge. So 
you're gonna be back in the application say, okay, my transaction is committed. So the transaction has to be committed in both servers. So that is why it's important to have low, very low network latency between the multiple nodes within the availability group, uh, because you know it has to go to all of them, minimum two, to commit the, uh, the transaction. Then you have the other mode, which is asynchronous, right? Which allows the you know a background process to transfer the, uh, the, the changes to the other replicas. So that means if you do a transaction, uh, you don't have to wait till the transaction get committed to all the replicas, right? You're gonna get it back right away and you will have eventually less latency, right? The point is that this asynchronous process will go to the other mm, replicas and eventually in a measure of, in a case of a disaster, you can have some data loss, right? So when we have to deal with one of the situation in where the primary replica goes down and we need to do this process of failover, remember failover is one of the other replicas that is acting as standby will take the new role of primary, right? You have, two types of failover. One is automatic failover. So you, you, know, have, you don't have to do anything. Uh, and in the background, it will switch to one or the other. To be able to use automatic failover, you have to use synchronous replication, right? Because again, it has to be sure that there is no data loss. And you know, then there is the manual failover that you can use it in both cases, on synchronous or asynchronous, right? But you always have to consider that you know, if you are using asynchronous, you may have some data loss. There are some uh, metrics that you can check to see uh, the delay on the replicas between one and, and, and the other, right? And definitely, uh, you know, if your system is is working normally, let's say on a, on a, on a good, with a good network connection, et cetera, you won't have this data loss. So then if we go a step forward, right, for the clients to be able to connect to this uh, availability group, right, you will have only a single point of connection, which is this listener, right? A fixed name with a floating IP address that depending on which one is the active, it will change the, the IP address under, under hood. Uh, but, you know, you, your application will always be connected to the listener. So how do you see this uh, from Management Studio, for example, right? So here you have an example of one availability group called AC001. In where you have three servers, well, server one, two, and three. Server one is the primary. It is serving three databases, and you have one listener. Right? Then you know in this screenshot there is also the concept of distribute availability group, right? Which allow you to uh, you know replicate the whole availability group to another cluster that may be on a different. Um, you know, it, since it's not the same window cluster, it can be, you know, in Azure, for example. So this is one of the techniques that can be used also to, you know, besides doing uh, HADR, it also can be used to migrate, right? Your environment from one uh, environment to the other, if you are migrating to the cloud, uh, for example. Mm -hmm. If we go uh, another step and we talk about all this within, Azure, right? Uh, let's say that you are setting up your virtual machines in where you're going to be installing SQL Server, right? Uh, you have this concept of availability sets and availability zones. And you see that by default, they provide different levels of SLA, right? So the original one or the first one, availability set, right? You can have uh, what Microsoft called fault domains. Right? And you have to deploy your virtual machines on different fault domain. So making sure that, you know, Microsoft, of course, they need to apply their, their patches on their own infrastructure. <coughs> uh, 
So, but imagine that you have all your servers, all your virtual machine in the same full domain. So, you know, with the full domain concept, they guarantee you that they will never be working on two of these four domains at the same time, right? So, you know, if you have two servers, right, you have to put one in one four domain and the other one into the other four domain. So this way you are fully guaranteed that Microsoft is not gonna be working on, on both of them at the same time, right? Then, you know, we have this concept of availability zone, which has additional SLA, right? Within the same Azure region, let's say East US, there are separate zones, right? Like in this case, three. Uh, each of the songs are quite close between each of them, but uh, each of them, they have their own power source, AC cooling, networking, et cetera, right? So this way, even if there is a, 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 a possible major disaster that bring one of the songs down, right? You may have your servers, your application distributed into multiple songs. Right? And you can accomplish, you know, the uh, more SLA. Mm -hmm. So, if we start focusing on SQL Server HADR technologies on Azure virtual machines, right? We can consider the ones that we mentioned till now, but there is an additional one. So we talk about availability group. We talk about uh, failover cluster, log shipping, backup and restore, of course important to test your your restore right because you know it's, it's really really important to make sure that if you do the backup you are able to restore it as well and there is also this concept of azure site recovery right in where you can take some sort of a snapshot of your virtual machine in order to restore it in case of a disaster right here then you know i have a comparison between um availability group and failover cluster I, I will leave the presentation for later so you can check what you can do with that with one or the other one of them is easy to stop to the other one of them you can set up additional sla and so on right um, and and here is some sort of summary for the overall thing mm -hmm. then as i mentioned SQL Server 2022 was uh, presented uh, at the beginning of November in Ignite. And, you know, is focused on this hybrid data service with hybrid means on-prem and the cloud, right? So in the area of HADR, right? But also to use it as a migration technique, right? We have the possibility now to have an availability group. In this case, it's gonna be a distributed availability group, right? In where one of the replicas could be an Azure SQL managed instance, right? So uh, you can have your databases running on-prem in your own data center or in an Azure virtual machine and have a distributed availability group with the managed instance, right? So, uh, the databases will be synchronized all the time. And eventually, if you have to fail over from uh, you know, your SQL Server 2022 to uh, manage instance, you can do it, right? Again, for DR, uh, HADR purposes, or eventually if you're trying to move your workload from on-premise to the cloud, right? that is also the, the, the other way to, to use it. And eventually, if you need to fail back to the on-premise environment, you can do it with absolutely no problem. It's also um, important to mention that in, in this version, SQL Server 2022, you will also be able to take a backup of your databases in the managed instance and restore it to SQL Server 22, 2022, right? You are not able to do that today with SQL Server uh, 2019, right? So if you move your databases from SQL Server 2019 or any other version to manage instance, right? With the backup restore, right? You can do that. 
you cannot move back, right? Uh, taking a backup of, of the data and restore it to 2019, right? Now in 2022, which was presented uh, recently, um, you will be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Do we have any questions so far? Right now, I believe we're good. This has been very clear, thank you. Okay, excellent. All right, so with that, we are just rounding up the, the presentation, right? Uh, definitely, Microsoft is providing us uh, with a lot of features uh, to accomplish HADR, but we also have to do our part. We have to do our homework, right? We have to, you know, set up the environment properly, as I said, syncing on HADR uh, since even before we buy anything, right? Uh, and with that, you know, here I'm leaving you uh, another uh, a QR code, a link for you to keep learning about Manage Instant, which is one of my favorite uh, members of the Azure SQL family, right? Here, you may have an overall um, you know, uh, the, the overall documentation for Azure SQL Fundamentals in the Microsoft Learn portal. I also like to emphasize that, uh, you know, the, the, the support, the, 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 the mainstream and the extended support for 2005, 2008, 2008, R2 are, uh, you know, are not there anymore. So today, if you call Microsoft saying that you have a 20, uh, a SQL 2008, they will say, what, what is this brother, right? SQL Server 2012 uh, is out of the um, main uh, support, right? Uh, it's gonna also be end of the extended support in, in next year. So, and we are close to do the same with 2014. So it's always important that you uh, have in mind that, uh, you know, if, if your environment is working well, uh, you don't have to stay there because it, it is just working, right? So if you move to newer SQL Server versions, if you move to Azure, right? You always, we have additional, let's say, uh, features, possibilities to accomplish more and more HADR for your system and accomplish the end result or, or, or your main objective, which is business continuity. Mm. And with that, um, here I, I leave my contacts Again, for, uh, you know, if you have further questions, I don't know, guys, if, if there are uh, additional questions in, in the audience. Uh, but again, you can reach me uh, by Twitter or by uh, LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do have one question. Uh, it's on availability zones. Is there a risk of losing data between zones? And the assumption is that you would fall to Microsoft's SLAs. Uh, okay, if you have your SQL Server in uh, one Azure region, only one Azure uh, zone, right, and you have only one VM sitting in there, the answer of losing data, right, or losing availability is yes, and I can tell you that it happened to me once, right, the, we have, I mean, we have a, a DR solution with a, another Azure region, but that virtual machine that was hosting SQL Server just crashed, right? And it was not able to recover. We had the backup, we have the backup offloaded to other regions, but we have to act, uh, active, active the um, DR procedure. So, you know, we are using East, uh, West Europe and North Europe uh, regions. So we have to activate the failover process from one zone to the other. 
the applications also had to be moved from one zone to the other. So, and, and that, uh, you know, the, the answer for the question is yes. If you have everything in one region, one zone, and the zones go down or your VM goes down, if you don't have your solution uh, ready to, let's say, have it replicated to another zone with, for example, availability group, uh, yes, you can lose it. Sounds good. I think that's all the questions we have. All right. Uh, well, thank you very much uh, for the invitation here. It was a pleasure to me to present uh, here in your chapter, uh, in your chapter, in your uh, group. <laughs> I uh, still have the, the, the past. That's <laughs> you know, okay. The it's one and the same. <laughs> yeah, awesome. it's, it's, it's the same. It's just a different name. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Thank you very, very much. This was awesome. Uh, we will get this up on YouTube here, hopefully by the end of today. Okay. If anybody watching the recording has any questions, his contact info is on the previous slide. Do not hesitate to reach out to him. Um, as for our virtual group, um, we are meeting again on December 14th, 2021 with Lee Markham talking about modern SQL Server features that make life better. So feel free to check it out. Let us know if you have any questions. If you're interested in speaking for a future event, let us know. Or quite frankly, if you have any topics you'd love to see, let us know. We'd be happy to find somebody to put together a presentation just for you. So thank you very much, everybody, for attending. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.